Football, the beautiful game for all ages. No doubt these children will be dreaming of the future as soccer's World Cup comes to South Africa. It'll be the biggest sporting event of the new century. But away from World Cup fever, the Rainbow Nation is struggling with a sad sideshow. Nearly 4.5 million South Africans are living with HIV AIDS. Greenpoint Stadium, where 70,000 football fans will watch the semi-final of the World Cup in July. An impressive figure by anybody's standards, but it's worth bearing in mind that nearly six times that many people will die of AIDS in South Africa in 2010. The cost to the economy could be as much as 1% of GDP. That's just under $3 billion every year. The big impact at the moment is on, on absenteeism, on training. Um, if people are ill or do die from HIV infection, of course there's a turnover of labour. I think that is the biggest impact. Um, there's also an impact because of the cost of treatment programmes, on healthcare programmes, um, uh, medical aid schemes that will also cost um, organisations. The previous government under Thabo Mbeki compounded the problem by casting doubt on the efficacy of antiretroviral treatments and advocated herbs and vegetables as a cure instead. It's estimated nearly 300,000 people died as a result of the government's 10 years of denial and neglect. But in spite of that, there is now hope. Congratulations to probably civil society and, and you know, the medical fraternity who deftly moved around the political obstacles and got it done anyway. And then, you know, with the new administration, there has been a real energy to say, OK, what are the next steps and how do we, how do we get going? In one of the biggest treatment programmes in the world, nearly a million people in South Africa are on antiretroviral treatments, which makes HIV a chronic disease rather than a death sentence, as long as diagnosis is early and medication is continuous. The HIV is also prolonged my life as well. It is working and also to add that healthy lifestyle you, you, you style, it makes you very powerful. And uh, actually I'm not scared of HIV. But you can't start treatment unless you know your status. Nyameko Kibido is now a counsellor for an innovative scheme which brings testing to the people without the stigma. The Tutu Tester travels around the poorer regions of Cape Town, offering people free checkups for chronic conditions like diabetes and heart disease, and they're able to throw in a discreet HIV AIDS test as well. Last year it helped 12,000 people. One line that you see on there means you are negative, you don't have HIV. Two lines means you are positive, you have got HIV. The Tutu Tester also offers a test for tuberculosis, which is now the leading cause of death in South Africa, as one of the world's biggest TB epidemics takes hold in HIV sufferers who have compromised immune systems. The Ubuntu Clinic in Kayalicha, outside Cape Town, has pioneered the treatment of HIV AIDS and tuberculosis as a co-infection. All TB patients are supposed to be asked about HIV status because HIV and TB are terrible twins. The infrastructure doesn't allow some of the clinics you know, to integrate. The people that need to change their mentality and attitude are staff. Because if you're working in a TB clinic, you should be curious about HIV. If you're working in an HIV clinic, you should be curious about TB. <laughs> The first third world designed AIDS vaccine to prevent it taking hold in the first place has been designed and is under trial at the University of Cape Town. Most of the funding for it now comes from the United States. AIDS vaccine research is notoriously difficult. In 2007, the Merck drug company had a disastrous trial in South Africa with an AIDS vaccine which actually seemed to increase infection. Pharmaceutical companies are now reluctant to take part. It's not easy. It's very challenging. And, and drug companies have, they did start off putting quite a lot of resources in and, and one by one they've pulled out of doing vaccine, HIV vaccine research. If the vaccine um, is, is any risk at all, companies don't, they'd rather put their time into things that are more profitable. While vaccine research continues, so does the crisis. 
The Metropolitan Foundation has been measuring the impact of antiretroviral treatment on different organizations and companies. It makes the case that it actually helps the company's bottom line to be proactive. HIV is costing the company um, around 2% of annual payroll on the uh, current take up on antiretroviral treatment, whereas it would have cost them anywhere from 3 to 4 percent of payroll um, if they haven't made um, antiretroviral treatment available to their employees. So there is definitely a huge saving. Despite the alarming numbers, the truth is that the epidemics have a much greater impact on people in the rural communities, mainly women and children, who are not part of the formal economy. There are now 1.2 million AIDS orphans in South Africa. A huge burden, but one the economy appears able to handle. There were periods in South Africa where I had to talk to the international rating agencies, um, Standard Bin Poor's and so on, and they wanted to see, you know, or ask what is the impact of HIV on the economy and how our business is uh, managing it. And, um, and their rating wasn't affected by it after all because we were managing it and we were treating people. In 2009, the world spent around $13 billion on HIV alone, with the money coming from global funding agencies, but with no visible reduction in HIV infections. Activists say they want to see less AIDS for their money, not more money for their AIDS. And in World Cup year, the message from the Desmond Tutu HIV Foundation is give HIV the red card.